right before, right before we start, I would uh, ask for prayer this morning. Pastor Lou just texted me, and Gwen needs a miracle before the day's out, or she's going to be home with the Lord. So we need to be praying for a miracle. Amen, Pastor Gwen? So we can just do that and join in together. Brother. Father, you sent your son to pay the price. He took those stripes that we might be healed, Lord. And Lord, there were stripes that he took for Sister Gwen. And Lord, we come to you on the basis of your word, Lord, in faith, Lord. And we're confessing on her behalf, healing by those stripes, Lord. And we celebrate Jesus this day and every day, Lord, just because he's worthy. And Father, where there's lack of faith, Lord, as the body of Christ comes together, we add our faith, Lord. Just as those, those men lowered their friend down through that roof, and Jesus said it was their faith, that healed him. And so, Lord, we lift Sister Gwen into your presence by faith, Lord. We gather our faith together, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, for your many kindnesses, Lord, and your compassion. And we give you all praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Please worship as hard as you can. I will give you thanks with all my heart. I will sing you praise before the heavenly beings and will bow down with your holy 
thank you. I give thanks to your name for your constant love and faithfulness. You have exalted your name and your promise above everything else. One day I called to answer me and increase my strength within me as you call on me today. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would one day walk on water? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby boy has walked where angels trod. And when you kiss your little baby, you kiss the face of God. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would give sight to a blind man? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would calm a storm with his hand. Did you know that your baby boy has come to set men free? That this child that you delivered would soon deliver you. Mary, did you know the blind will see the deaf will hear, the dead will live again. The lame will leap, the dumb will speak, the praises of the Lamb. Oh, Mary, did you know that your baby boy is Lord of all creation? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would one day rule the nations? Did you know that your baby boy is heaven's perfect lamb? This sleeping child you're holding is the great I am. Hallelujah. We give you thanks, honor, and praise, Lord. Give us the strength and carry you close every day. Christmas is we celebrate. We come together and celebrate one time a year, at least most people, but Christmas is every day. Easter is every day. But what we believe. We need, to, we need to share it with others. Oh, 
on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go telling on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. That Jesus Christ is born. Good morning, everyone. We're glad you came out to worship with us this morning. I hope everyone had a Merry Christmas. I've seen lots of pictures on Facebook, so it sure looks like people did. Well, we're glad that you came out this morning. We just want to do a couple quick announcements. Don't forget the church office is closed this week. Uh, but if you have a need, you call Pastor, call Pastor Tim. If they don't answer, leave a message. They can't call you back if you don't leave a message. So if you have an emergency, you have a need, make sure you call one of them. There'll be no youth or leadership tonight either because of the holiday, but they'll start back up next week in January. Um, and also, don't forget, the ladies' tea is coming up on January the 9th. So, ladies, mark your calendars for that, 3 p.m. It's just a good day of fellowship and fun. We play games. We have tea. We eat cookies. and So make sure you bring a batch of cookies to share, and we get to go home with lots of cookies. And then a really special announcement, January the 13th, which is a Wednesday night at 730 um, Pastor Phil Capuccio is going to be here. So many of you know Pastor Capuccio. He has a prophetic ministry that he travels around the world. And he has a word that he feels God told him to bring to Florida. And so we're one of the first places he's going to deliver it. So mark your calendars. Come out that night. I'm excited to, to see what God has for us. Amen. Yeah. And if you'd like to purchase is a DVD of our Christmas play that we just had, The Fourth Wise Man. They're available now. Um, it's, it's a $10 donation. You can share them with your family and friends. We've already ordered a bunch of them that we're sending to everybody all over because I'm believing it's going to minister to people because it was one of the best plays that we've ever done here. So if you didn't get to see it, buy the DVD so that you can see that also. Then we have another important announcement. I think we announced last weekend that we were going to have a dance conference <laughs> <laughs> on January the 15th, but we just found out yesterday that our person who was going to come and do the conference for us cannot come that weekend. Oh, so, no. yeah, good reason. She found out on Christmas Day that her family has planned a surprise birthday party for her on the 15th and family and friends are coming from all over the country to celebrate and when they found out that she committed to do this to us they had to tell her so she emailed Kristen yesterday to let her know but it's just postponed it's not canceled we're actually meeting with her tomorrow Kristen and I to get another date so we are going to have it, but it's just not going to be on the 15th. But just keep your eyes and your ears peeled. We will let you know as soon as we get that date and time. Amen? Yeah, she's even writing a whole workbook on dance and prophetic minist dance ministry and drama and flags and all that stuff. So she's excited to come. So we will schedule it as soon as we can. Amen? And we got a couple birthdays this week. Mimi's birthday is on Yay. Tuesday. Mimi. Happy birthday, Mimi. And Jarrett Pratt's birthday is on the 31st, New Year's Eve. So make sure you tell Jarrett happy birthday. Amen. Happy birthday. Now, how many people are ready to worship? I tell you what, if you missed it last Wednesday night, we went to Countryside Mall and we did a flash mob and we had the best time. Amen. And we really touched a lot of people. People in our group had people coming up to them afterwards just telling us how much they were blessed by it and how exciting it was and it was so much fun. So we're already preparing for next Christmas. 
All right. So <laughs> next Christmas when we do it, if you didn't come out, make sure you come out because it was just that we had just a great time and it was a great evangelism tool. So make sure you keep that on your calendar for next year. But in the meantime, we get to worship this morning. We sang Go Tell It on the Mountain Wednesday night. Yeah. We proclaimed it. We shouted it. Somebody even told George they heard him. They were at the other end of the mall. <laughs> we were at the ice skating rink, and George started Go Tell It on the Mountain. And a man that was shopping heard him and kept following his voice until he found us. So George proclaimed it loudly. <laughs> Wednesday night. Let us proclaim it loudly this morning in here. Amen. Let's worship. Go tell it on the mountain. Go tell it on the mountain. Over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain. That Jesus Christ is Lord. Go tell it on the mountain. Over the hills. Jesus Christ is born. The shepherds kept their watch over silent flocks by night. Behold, throughout the heavens, you're shown a holy light. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain. Jesus Christ is born. Shepherds fear and tremble. Oh, heaven and earth. Bring out the angel chorus that hailed our Savior's birth. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain. Jesus Christ is born. Down in a lonely manger, the humble Christ was born. He brought us God's salvation, the blessed Christmas morn. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain. Jesus Christ is born. Jesus Christ is born. Jesus Christ is born. Step down into darkness, open my eyes, let me see. Beauty that may this heart adore you, hope of a life spent with you. So here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am. To say that you're my God, you're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. King of all days, oh, so highly exalted, glorious in heaven. Bow down, here I am to say that you're 
my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. I'll never know how much it costs to see my sin upon that cross. I'll never know how much it costs to see my sin upon that cross. I'll never know how much it costs to see my sin upon that cross. I'll never know how much it costs to see my sin upon that cross. So here I am to together wonderful to me here i am to worship here i am to bow down here i am to say that you're my god you're all together lovely all together worthy all together wonderful to me I'll never know how much it costs to see our sin upon a cross. I'll never know how much it costs to see my sin upon that cross. So here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. Here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. All the kings of earth will give you thanks, Lord. When they hear what you have promised, they will sing of the Lord's ways. For the Lord's glory is great. Though the Lord is exalted, he takes note of the humble. But he knows the haughty from the far. If I walk in the thick of danger, he will preserve my life. Thank you, Lord. My Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there's none like you in all of my days. I want to praise the wonders of your mighty. Comfort, my shelter, tower of refuge and strength. Let every breath, all that I have, never cease to worship you. Shout to the Lord, all the earth, let us sing. 
power and majesty, praise to the King. Nothing of man and the seas will roar at the sound of your name. I leap with joy at the work of your hands. Forever I'll love you, forever I'll stand. Nothing compares to the promise I have in you. My Savior, my Jesus, Lord, there is none like you. In all of my days, I want to praise the wonders of God. Comfort, my shelter, tower of refuge and strength. Let every breath, all that I am, never cease to worship you. Shout to the Lord on the earth, let us sing. Mountains bow down and the seas will roar at the sound of your name. I sing for joy at the work of your hands. Forever I love you, forever I'll stand. Nothing compares. Thank you, Father. Ben, don't go anywhere, because I want you to play Give Thanks for the offering, all right? But Father, we thank you. We bless you this morning, God. There's so many things I want to do and share, being the end of the year, Father, getting ready to go into 2016. I just ask for your anointing on this service. God, let your presence be upon your people. And I'm careful, God, to make sure you receive all the glory and all the honor. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Yes, and just say amen and be seated. Be, just say amen, amen and be seated. Can we have a stool over here? We got one. Never mind. I'm just going to be a few minutes, then we're going to we're going to take an offering, and then we're going to uh, sing again. But about 3 o'clock this morning, the Lord woke me up, and I went out of my office and was praying. And it's funny because I couldn't get Lou off my mind, and then... I just gave him a little text in when he texted me with the news about Gwen. We really need to pray for them because one of the reasons, Saints, you know, this is Lou's second wife that has had cancer, and she died on New Year's Eve, the first wife did. And we're entering that season again, and I don't want, please, if God's going to take her, either take her before or after. Don't make Lou go through exactly the same thing. That's my heart's cry for Pastor Lou right now. So please keep him in prayer with that. But anyhow, God gave me, he usually gives me a scripture that we post for the year. And this year he gave me two. He gave me two scriptures. They kind of go hand to hand. The one, I, I, I say it so often here, it's probably become automatic to us. But it's, it's Hebrews 11.1. 1. I don't know if it's up there or not. It says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And I just want to drop in your heart again. Remember I don't have to hope or have faith that I drive a Kia van. I got keys for one. It doesn't take faith. It takes faith that you have things that you can't see. But without hope, take my echo off, please. Without hope, you don't have anything to seed faith with. Faith is the, the substance of things hoped for. What the world right now is trying to destroy, what terrorism does, it destroys hope. 
it causes fear. Fear is the opposite of hope. And it causes, and, and when you start losing hope in things, you don't have anything to seed your faith with. See, I hope for a lot of things to happen. Now, and, now let me give you a second when you understand where I'm coming above. This is 3 John, and it's, it's verse 2. It's only one chapter. It says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou may prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospers. And I believe, that's what it says, right? Okay. I make, sure we have, I make sure I have the same one you all look at. Some people look maybe I was speaking French here. I want to make sure we were all right. But God wants us to prosper. He doesn't, he, God's not looking at a way to get you. He's looking at a way to bless you. Amen. Whether you believe that or not, he's always looking for a way to, to encourage you and build you up and bless you. If, if you would do that to your children, and the most righteous thing you did, the Bible says, is filthy rags, before God, how much more would God for towards his children who is perfect want to bless his children? So he's not looking for ways. He's looking for ways to prosper you. And part of the ways he wants to prosper you is he wants you to keep hope alive in your heart. Keep, keep that alive in your heart that your faith may grow. Without faith, the Bible says you cannot please God. It takes faith to please God. you got to have faith. I'm not putting faith aside for hope, but you need hope in order to see faith. I can't walk around and demand an apple tree to grow if I don't have seed. Right? So my seed for faith is hope. I hope for things. And with that, when I start seeing these things, I'll start to prosper. God's going to prosper me both in health and wisdom and understanding. And I'm starting to understand what God's trying to say to his church right now. Stop looking like we're in a doomsday. The worst thing that could happen is the very best thing to a Christian. Christ comes back. If you believe in the first coming, you got to believe in the second. Come on. So if the worst thing that can happen to us as far as the world considers is that we leave or we stay or whatever, whether we're raptured or not, who knows? The Bible isn't clear on it. But our bishop taught us, teach them that we go, that we stay, and if we go, thank God. But whatever, whichever one it is, we win. If you believe the Bible, you win, and we're going to have the ability to do that. So these this year, put those two scriptures back up, please. Can you put them up? Can you put them up together? And no, is that asking too much? If you don't know how to do it, switch them back and forth. But these are the two scriptures that we're going to really be building on for this year. These are the ones God's going to be putting in our hearts. You're going to hear me quoting these a lot this year because I believe God's trying to say something to the church as far as coming together, both in your hope and your faith. And be ready for a prosperous year. I believe when the world economy is dropping, come on, God's, God's is not. I believe when everything around you looks dark and doom, I'm going to preach this in a minute, you are in the light of the kingdom. As a matter of fact, you are the light of the kingdom. So don't let the world destroy you. Don't let what's going on around you cause your hope to disappear. When I got this word from Luna today, my heart broke. I got a sister that's, that's fighting cancer, but yet we've had over 60 people in this church get healed from cancer, and two people that, I would, that personally I would love to see God do a miracle for, he's not doing. But how many people know he's still God? In the midst of that, he's still God. This is about two years now. We've seen over 60 documented proofs of cancer healings in this place. The word of the Lord is we're a cancer-free zone, and two people close to me are going to be dying from cancer unless God does something miraculous right now in the midst of it. I'm not letting go till they breathe their last breath. I ain't letting go of the promises of God. But his wisdom is better than ours. Come on. 
What the enemy meant for evil, God always turns around for good to those that love him and serve him. Come on. And I believe God is a God that's going to do something miraculous. I'm glad to see more people show up. I was getting worried that my whole church deserted me for Christmas. Amen. Does my heart a little bit better. I thought everybody left me. But God has got a plan. I don't. I know we got a couple of visitors here today, sir. I know you told me you're from Germany, but God just put something in my heart when I stood outside and saw you sitting there. I don't know if you believe in a prophetic anointing. I don't know if you understand Pentecostal like we are. We're tongue talking, head slapping. We believe God still talks today, and I really believe God says to me, "There's things that you've desired in your heart." And the minute I saw you, I saw come out of my office over there. I said in my spirit, I felt. There's things you desire in your heart. There's been dreams you've had. And God says, sir, you're going to see some of them dreams come to pass this year. You've prolonged, you've waited for them, and you waited for them. I don't know what it is. I don't know whether you're here on vacation, whether you're visiting, whether it's, I don't know what it is. But God sent you here today just to encourage you to tell you some of your dreams are going to come to pass, says the Lord. Amen. Welcome to Rock Church, by the way. God bless you. Welcome to Rock Church. Amen. Somebody say amen. Amen. Let's get your offering ready, saints. Your tithe goes to you. If you're visiting, don't you dare put your tithe in here. Your pastor counts on it. But your 90% will take any of that or all of it. Amen. This is your last chance to give this year. If you need a tax break, write that $10,000 check. Amen. That's between you and it's between you and law, not me. Amen. Father, I ask for your blessing upon the gift and the giver. Father, as we give our tithes and our offerings unto you today, Lord, we ask for your blessing. We give you the glory and the praises. In Jesus' name I pray. Let everybody say. Amen. If you need an envelope, please lift your hands. We'll put an envelope in your hand. We, just want to bring, we don't take a tithe and offering around here. We bring it. Amen. Bring your tithes and your offerings forward, saints. Give thanks to the grateful. Give thanks unto the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. His Son. Whoops. Give thanks. I checked, Pamela. Give thanks. And to the Holy One, give thanks, because He's given Jesus Christ, His Son. Pick it up, love it, go quicker. And now, let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am strong. Because of what the Lord has done for us. And now let the weak say I am strong. Oh, let, let the, the poor say I am rich. Because of what the Lord has done.
worth of what the Lord has done for us. Let the poor, let the poor say I am rich. Because of what? Because of what the, the Lord, Lord has done for us. To give thanks. Father, we give you thanks for what you're doing in the earth. What you're doing in this earth too, Lord. We just ask for your blessing and we give you all the glory. It's in Jesus' name. Let everybody say amen. 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 Let's be seated in his presence, Junior Church, children 13 and under. Brother Wayne, stay seated. <laughs> or allowed to, I got to remind Brother Wayne, he's not 13 anymore. Everyone. They can all go over with my beautiful, beautiful bride. I've already preached this to her. She gets it way before you do most of the time. She's my guinea pig. How many of you read Dr. Gwyn Shaw's daily, daily devotional? Just a couple of us read it. I read it faithfully every morning. I read Christmas Eve's service, and I'm going to preach it to you a little bit here in a minute. I think it's too important. I'm not preaching out of our book because I knew so many people were going to be there. I'm preaching a mini-series right now that Dutch Sheets wrote called uh, The Pleasure of His Company. I think I'm on lesson 19 or 20, somewhere around there. And uh, but I, there's so many people out, and I want I want people to continue walking in this vein of it and not miss it. So I decided, as I read this one Christmas Eve, I didn't know exactly what I was going to do when I read this one Christmas Eve. It's called "Put on the Armor of Light." And it's going to talk about the three loves that the Bible talks about in a minute. But and so I'm just going to share a little bit there, and I'm going to try to get you out of here a little early, let you go home. I know it's vacation time still, and I'm blessed this week. Next week, my wife is off of work, and Pray for me, because if Lou needs me, I'm out of here at a drop of a dime for Pastor Lou. You guys understand that, right? So if he needs me, I will hop in my car and head north. And I got a couple of hope. I mean, uh, Wayne and Diane said they'll ride along with me. They'll go up and ride along with me to give me, give me company and show, help chauffeur me. And uh, it's hard for me to fly anymore because of the pressed air with these hips and knees the way they are to the so Blue Cross decides they're going to pay for the surgery or wait for Medicare, either one. But, uh, <clears throat> uh, but my lawyers advised me not to fight them. It would cost me too much money, and they would prolong it until Medicare kicked in. So I have to wait. So uh, we're just believing God for the miracle. Meanwhile, and I, did, I just didn't realize how bad the – so I flew to Baltimore recently, how bad that pressurized air hurts arthritis, and it does. Amen. So – just keep me in prayer that we will drive, and I don't mind driving. I can get out anytime I want to and walk and stretch at that point. You know, 95 has got a million restaurants or rest stops you can stop at on the way up north. So, uh, so just keep us in prayer as we do that. But open your Bibles to Romans 13. Listen to me. If you don't bring a Bible to church, you're missing something. I don't say this often. I know we put them up here behind me and all that, but it's still not the same as your Bible. And if you don't own a Bible, you see Missy after this church, and we'll buy you a Bible. I found out this young man here yesterday. What's, you all right? I found a young man here, last, well, I gave him last Sunday, and that was Janice's dad. I found he never owned a Bible of his own. The only one he ever owned was one the Gideons gave him. And that's why we bought him that Bible, saints. I wanted him to have his own sword, his own Bible. And I thank God we have him on phones now and all that stuff. But you can't write in that one. And it's okay. It's not a sin to write in your Bible. Some people, I, I, my, my, my associate pastor here for years now, he's pastoring the Rock Church in Largo. He was, he was an old Nazarene. And uh, he, they, they cherished the book as the book itself being holy, not just the words of it. And one time I was preaching about standing on the promises of God, and I threw my Bible on the ground, went over and stood on it. And Dave, Pastor Dave went, <gasps> But he's got a heart attack because I was literally standing on the Word. And I did it as an impact because you know how many people know it's good to stand on the Word of God. Uh, not, not naturally, but the Bible always says first in the natural, then the spiritual. So I was just right, trying to make an impact about it. This book itself is not holy. It's the contents. 
Amen. It's the author that made it holy. Come on. And what makes it holy is that you start living it. When you start living it, it becomes holy in you. Come on. You all with me? Some of you with me? All right. It is, saints. Come on. This book was put together by, I don't know, that's right. I forgot we had it redone. This is a Thompson Chain reference. I don't know who, who the author, who the publisher was. Uh, Kurt Bridge. Kurt Bridge is the one who put this book together, but the Holy Ghost inspired it. Amen. He dropped it in the hearts of men, and men wrote it on scrolls. And it's been, how many people know, this, this is still the bestseller year after year after year. The Holy Bible sells more than any book ever written, amen. It still is the best seller. They never post that, but every year this is the best seller on the best sellers list. The Holy Bible is, amen. But because it's but you, it, it's good that it's on paper, but it's a whole lot better when it starts getting written in your heart. It becomes more alive when it's written in your heart, not just on paper. Come on, say amen. Well, I'll tell you, if I don't pastor you once in a while, I missed the boat. So don't forget that. Take, bring your Bible to church. And, and, and sometimes I know I, I made George stop using his phone because I think he was looking up scores more than he was the Bible. Amen. So, sometimes I'm sitting there watching and I hear him go, oh. Uh, when he was saying that in front of the Bible, so I know he wasn't knowing that. Amen. I'm teasing George. He's not even hearing I'm teasing him. Chapter 13. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. That's right. So chapter 13? Yeah. That of Romans. Romans 13, 1. What I really want to read is, I'm going to get to verse 12, but I'm going to read it all. Let every soul be subject unto the higher power, for there is no power but God, the power that be ordained of God. Do you hear that? Any power that's on the earth, God has ordained it. Let me say it again. A N Y. Any power that is on earth, good or bad, God has allowed it. There's no big war in heaven between Lucifer and God. God's not biting his nails up there wondering what is he going to do with the situation on the earth. Everything's going according to plan. Somebody say, oh me or amen. Everything's going according to plan. God's got a plan. When he sent Jesus Christ the first time, he had a plan. When he killed him and was going to be crucified and rose him from the grave, he had a plan. He has a plan when to send him back. Come on. To take us out of here and put an end to this thing once and for all. God's got a plan. Not only does he have an army marching on the earth, he's got a plan to fulfill their march. Say amen. Amen. If you don't believe that, keep reading your Bible. You'll get it into you. God's not worried about what's going on. He's only concerned that his church won't become righteous. He's still trying to line this church up. When his church starts lining itself up, you're going to see Christ comes back. He's going to come back for a church that's righteous and holy and without spot or wrinkle. Is it here yet? And he's not looking for perfection. He's looking for a church that will just give it all. Why am I echoing so much, Brother Bill? Do you know? Is it just, this, is it just the atmosphere? It's me? Whosoever therefore restraineth the power, resist the ordinance that they resist, shall receive to them damnation. Hmm. I can't preach all this. For rulers are not a terror to do good works, but to evil. Wilt thou not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt praise of the same. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do which is evil, be afraid, for he beareth not the sword of vain. He is the minister of God to revenge, to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. If you're going to do good, you have nothing to be afraid of. God's going to bless you. He's going to be with you. If you're doing bad and evil, God's going to persecute you. You will be judged. Who's going to get judged first? Who's the Bible say gets judged first? Who's we? The church. Judgment comes to the house of God first and then to the evil. God's going to judge his house first to make sure his house is in order 
so he can deal with this the way it needs to be dealt with. And he's doing that now, saints. There are Some of the elite are falling away. Some of the elite ministers in the gospel are not preaching the gospel anymore. They've watered it down. They're starting to become seeker-friendly. They're starting to say, well, as long as they believe there's a God, there's no other way to the Father except through Jesus Christ, his son. He made the way. Stop watering it down. Stop being righteously and politically correct and start being righteous and holy. Oh, boy. I'm stepping on toes in this place. I can feel it. You don't like it. Really, really don't like it. Saints, I can only tell you what the Word of God says. If I don't preach this and believe this is the truth, let's close the doors. Let's go home. This is truth. And that's the truth. Those of you that don't know that, watch, watch some old TV. Wherefore, verse 5, wherefore you must, must needs be subject, not only but wrath, but also of conscience sake. For this cause pay ye tribute also, for they are God's ministers attending continually upon the very thing. Render therefore to all their tribute, their dues, tribute to who tribute is due, and custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, and honor to whom honor. Pay unto those who's supposed to be honored. Give fear to those that are trying to be fear. God's going to pay back the things that people have paid out with. Whatever you sow, in other words, you are going to reap. If you're doing good, God's not going to give you evil for it. If you're sowing fear into people's hearts, God's going to cause fear to come upon your heart. Whatever it takes in the judgment day, God's going to judge you the way you read your Bible. It talks about a measuring rod. God measures you up with the way you have measured other people. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, that's scary, isn't it? Those little backbiting conversations. I have felt my tail get bit more and often. <clears throat> or a little knife gets stuck in my back every once in a while. Come on. The Bible says, smite the shepherd and scatter the sheep. I got good leadership. They, they really get behind me as far as I know. Come on. They protect me. I feel it. I got good leadership. Get behind me and pray. And do the things that we're supposed to do in the kingdom. That's why God blesses this house. We may not be the biggest house, but we do more things than mega churches do. That uh, lady's going to do the dance thing. Lexus said she couldn't get over the fact that we, we took about 30 people and went over there and watched the video. Not just ours, but the one the other lady posted, somebody else posted one. You saw that or not. That one has, was it, 8,000 hit, 800 hits? What was it? Kayla, remember? 800? 3,000, was it? So it was some high number. Her, her got all kind of hit. She, she couldn't go with this little church making an impact in a mall singing a couple songs like that. She was, and it was done well. And then, uh, by the way, Missy, where are you? Doo, 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 doo. She's counting. Make sure we take the play off of YouTube. 6,989 hits. The plays on YouTube, if they're going to be selling a $10 tape to make some funds for their ministry, how many people know they ain't going to buy it if you can go on YouTube and watch it? Come on. Just a little wisdom there, saints. That's all. So make sure that kiss. I just noticed it on there a little while ago. It's on our YouTube channel, our church's YouTube channel, so that one can get, can get pulled. The rest of them keep on there. That's for our ministry. Our ministry does a great job. Amen. Where was I? I'm in, I know I'm in Romans. Eight, no, oh, no man anything but to love one another. For he that loveth another 
have fulfilled the law. My God, that's good preaching. For this thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covenant. If there be any commandment that, that is briefly apprehended in thy saying, namely, that thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. For love is fulfilling the law, and that knowing the time, that now is the time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation near, that when we believe, the night is far spent, the day is at hand, this is what I want you to hear, let us therefore cast off works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting or drunkenness, not in chambering, wantfulness, not in strife or envy. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Say amen. I said I've read a lot there, but verse 12 says, The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let therefore cast off the works of darkness, and let us put on the armor of light. 41 years ago, in last June, I got delivered from heroin. I've been clean. Somebody posted on Facebook that I saw a thing. The guy said, Today is my fourth year drugless, no heroin. And he posted a sign up, and I and I wrote, I'm like, I'm like I rejoice with you, brother. God bless you. I said, and June was 41 years. He wrote back and went, wow, I can't wait. I said, me either. I hope I'm alive to see you post 41 years clean. Amen. Amen. Why not, saints? Why not believe with the guy? Amen. Come on. How many people know we've all had our, our skeletons? We've all come out of something that we had that God delivered us from, and we still have things yet to be delivered from. But what he's telling us right now, we are the salt. We are the light. We believe that our, our faith in Jesus Christ is built on love. And I want to talk to you today. I, this, was, this was called Put on the Armor of Light. But I want to talk to you today about three, the three loves of the Bible. That's what I really want to talk to you about. It's right in here in the book. It's, it goes on to talk about how love is the true light. In the wonderful chapters in Romans, we have the great summing up of all the law of the Torah. And Paul writes from the heavenly authority, Owe no man nothing but to love one another. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. That's verse 8. Verse 10 says, he repeated again, Love of working no evil to a neighbor. Therefore, love is fulfilling the law. Our, the greatest law he's given us is to tell, the greatest thing he says, love one another as I have loved you. And Christ died for the church. So we're supposed to get to the point where we love one another so much, we're willing to give everything. Uh, yeah, I think we got we got a business meeting coming up here in January, and you're going to be shocked, I believe, when you see how much this church has spent this year in helps. It helps, and we, and we haven't suffered. We haven't gone into our... Our savings accounts, we're, we're still at we still $100,000 is still intact that we have in our savings. And we were able to do it with the income that came in. Somebody say amen. amen. Now, we had, we had a couple big offerings come in, but we were able to help a lot of, we help people keep their homes, not just pay rent. There were some people that were going to lose their homes, and we were able to make mortgage payments to keep their homes for them, saints. This, this little tiny church has been able to do that. And who's our neighbor? Who's Jesus say our neighbor is? But the one, anyone that needs your help. Anyone, come on, back in the days of Christ, the Samaritan, the one that Jews hated the most, was their, their natural enemy. He's the one that helped the, the rabbi that was jumped on the street. The Jews passed him by, and the Samaritan paid his fee, picked him up, took him to an inn, and told the innkeeper, take care of him, and next time I, here's so much money, if that's not enough, next time I pass by, I'll give you the rest. And Jesus turned around and said, well, which one was his neighbor? Which one was his neighbor? We're supposed to care and help one another. I do block parties not to get our name out there, not just to say, hey, look at us. We do that because we go into lower income areas. We go in where people have needs over there at Westminster Home. Not everybody's a lower income area, but there's a lot of Section 8 housing in there for unwed mothers and mothers with children and all these things. We go in there with a blessing. We go in to bless people. I don't want... 
Can you imagine taking used clothes into a white collar neighborhood? It wouldn't work. We go into a lower income areas so that we can help people and bless them and encourage them. And not only do we go to give the natural things, but we go give spiritual. We spend three hours singing and praising and worshiping and dancing and doing all these things to bring the gospel the way Jesus did. Jesus didn't teach in the temple all the time. Read your Bible. You know, he did, he, I, don't, I, I think it was only one miracle in all the recorded Bibles that he did in the temple. Every other thing was on the street or someone's home. Jesus did his miracles where the people were. And we're supposed to take the gospel to our neighbor. Somebody say amen. amen. Now, let me, let me get through these three loves real quick. The first one, we all know this one. We all, you should know this one. It's called agape. In the Greek language, there are three different words to use love. I'm going to read right from her book, if you don't mind. I, I can't say it any better than she said it, and I'll preach what I want to between. The first, the three different uses for love. The highest, purest, and closest to the kind of love God has for us, divine love, is agape. It is a word which is found in the ancient Greek literature. It seems to have been inspired through the Holy Spirit, who is the giver of tongues or of languages and, and, and healing and, and all this, especially for the writings of the New Testament. It is a supernatural love that only God can give because it's unconditional and undeserving love. It contains a compassion and cannot and can continue to flow or exist even when it's not reciprocated. It is not the natural affection that we have for family, friends, or the way most of us love God. See, most of you get angry with God, and when, when things aren't going the way you want them to, you're more angry with God than you are with God. Say amen. Come on. I just had a minute, I just had a moment in my office, to be honest with you. I cried out, why? I didn't get my answer. It's not mine to know why. And I know that. God's got a plan. But his love is so strong. And his love is unconditional. Even when you're angry and you're broken, his promise to you is he will never leave you nor forsake you. He loves you in the midst of your yelling at him. He loves you in the midst of your crying. He loves you when you're throwing your tantrums. Come on, am I the only one that's ever thrown a tantrum before God? Come on. There's a couple of people being honest here. And this other word, I, I, I'm terrible. These, these are Greek words. I have a hard enough time with English words. Was it, is it called philio? P-H? Philio? Is that right? P-H-I-L-E-O. The second kind of love is called philio in the Greek. It is the kind of love friends have for each other and for our families. It is from the root that we get the word Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love. It's the kind of love we have one for the other. It's funny. It's really, it's really wild sometimes. I've had people in this church that, that come to this church and they say, I don't like to have the meetings when somebody comes in one Sunday or one day after church and wants an appointment and they come in and say, oh, Pastor Brian, I love this church and you and Sister Kim so much. I make my oath here. I'm going, oh, my God, here they go, out the door. <laughs> They're on their way out. Almost everyone that comes in does all that, pat me on the back, and it scares me to death because most of the time the enemy gets a hold of them and they're on their way out the door. I'll say something they don't like or I'll do something they don't like. And a lot of people, I remember when I first started preaching to some of you, and I, you would hear me agitate my wife. Boy, I wish some of you ladies had, I could take cameras of you. <laughs> do you understand? Sister Kim doesn't even hear that. I've been doing it since she was five years old. I've known my, I'm eight years older than my wife, but I've known my wife since she was five years old. Her and my kid's sister went all the way through school together. I, I used to tie her hair in knots when she was a little girl and, and all that thing. So, I, uh, oh, yeah, that's love, boy, you know, and all that. But, but the love we have one for the other, it's conditional. We will try hard it not to be, but it really is conditional. Even even husbands and wives, come on. That's why divorce is rampant in this nation. Do you know the, the, the church 
is in greater divorce status than the non-church right now? That's, isn't that terrible? There's more people in the church getting divorced now than not in the church. They get, get, get a hold of the truth. I teach, when I teach a marriage class, come on, those who have had my marriage class here, what's the one thing I tell you to do? Write the word what down on a piece of paper and burn it. Write the word divorce down, both of you, on a piece of paper, go into your home, put it in a frying pan, and set it on fire like it's out of your vocabulary because there should never be a divorce. No matter what, it's a lifetime commitment. Work through it. That's why my agitating doesn't bother Sister Kim. Most of you would have divorced me on day one, amen? But Sister Kim learned to put up with it because she knows, honestly, eh, most of the time, till I get to know you, I don't tease you. But once I get to know you, come on. I agitate you because it's my way, it's my little way of saying I love you. Some of you are going, well, don't love me so much. That's just who I am. I like to have fun. I believe life's supposed to be a blast. I really do. I believe life's supposed to be fun. I got a painting over here, someone, uh, someone picture of Jesus laughing. I believe that's the way he spent his life on the earth. The scriptures say it. Hollywood always has a tendency to get carried away when Jesus made the statement, don't go tell everyone after he healed somebody. And they always make it, he looks so serious. Don't go tell everyone. I believe he was going, don't tell everybody. My God, I'm going to get mobbed. Pop it. And people are going, come on, somebody gets healed, start doing backflips. Jesus went. I believe he started laughing. Look at that guy. Hey, he's just a little bit. Ex Remember when Brother Wayne did his cartwheel? Yeah. <laughs> Up here. Everybody kind of gets excited. Come on. When God moves on your behalf, I don't believe Jesus enjoyed that. I don't believe Jesus was so pious that he had to be all, all that in a bag of chips. I believe he enjoyed. I believe the garden cry, take this microphone from me, take this cup from me, had to do with he didn't want to leave. He wasn't afraid to go through it. That wasn't the first time he knew he was going to go through that. He knew it from the beginning of time. Just that he didn't want to leave his people again. Here God in the flesh was back walking on the earth like he did with Adam and Eve. And he's going, oh, Father, can you take this cup from me? So earnestly that he bled to his pores. Was it fear? People say, Jesus was so afraid. Come on. He has perfect love, and perfect love cast out what? Fear. Say that little three-letter word again. All. You know what the word all means? Everything. It means all. It means everything. Every bit of it. Pretty instant. The word all means all. And the third kind of love is eros, E-R-O-S. Did I say that right, Tricia? Eros? Eros? The third kind of love is eros. The kind of love does not necessarily mean love, but rather it refers to the sexual desires or giving sexual pleasures. Animals have this. I'm on but they don't have agape. There are some animals that have filio, whenever that, if I'm saying it right again or not, love, a friendly relationship between them, but agape love is much higher and much greater. I'm reading this straight from the book. It refers that love comes from God, and God is love and the source of love. His love will never reach its limit. It gives and it gives, and yet it is undiminished. It's like the river that runs through the country, the villages, the towns, the cities. The farmers use it. The people of the towns use it. The villages use it. Great cities use it. Yet the river keeps flowing until it pours into the ocean, where it gathers up and returns again upon the land that is in the great river. That is the great river of the love of God. 
we drink it, we wash our clothes in it, we bathe in it, we run our great generators by it, and there is always more and more. Agape love is like the river that doesn't run dry. You can't use it up. God loves you so much, you can't possibly use it up. And I have people say, then why is all this stuff happening in the world? Why don't God just put an end to it? Because he loves you so much, he's giving you freedom of choice. I love Kim. I do not control Kim. Nobody controls Kim. <laughs> I have tried. <laughs> Ain't happening. Yeah, when, when I had my office over here one day. Missy was working in the office. She went down into the file cabinet to get something out of the f bottom file drawer. I hurry up, went and put my feet up on top of the file drawer and said, I finally got a woman bound to me. Look at this. <laughs> and I took a picture of it. And I showed it to Bill. I finally got a woman to bound. Can't get Kim to the Missy went. <laughs> Don't tell it to Bill and give him any ideas. Love does not only generate light, it is light. Not only does it generate light, love is light. Without light, the world would freeze up. Oh, come on. Without the light of God's love, our hearts would become hard and cold as ice. God warns his people about the lack of love. He has promised them, I will give them a one heart. And I will put a new spirit within you, and I will take the stony heart out of your flesh, and will give them a heart of flesh. Can you put Ezekiel 11, 9 up, 19 up there, please? I don't have it written down here, so i got to read it from there too, unless I get my Bible. I will give them a stony heart and put a new spirit within you, and I will take the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give them a heart of flesh. Verse 36 Chapter 36, 26 says exactly the same thing. So it's important that he, Ezekiel speaks this twice. I, God says he's going to take your heart, a whole stony heart out of you. Do you understand that's what water baptism is about? The Holy Spirit comes in, he cuts away, he does a surgery in your heart, he cuts away the stoniness of your old heart, cuts the old nature off of you, you take it into the burial, like Jesus Christ walked into a grave, you come out of the grave the way Jesus came out of the grave, and now your heart and your body is brand new before God. And the Holy Spirit does that for you. That's why we call it a baptism of the Holy Spirit. He does this to you daily. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is not a one-time thing. It's daily. It's moment by moment. You want to read a great book, read Benny Hinn's book, Good Morning, Holy Spirit. And you'll start getting the impact of how important it is that you receive it fresh every day. What I did in the Holy Ghost today ain't going or might, I won't say ain't, might not work tomorrow. I need the freshness of God. Come on. Kim and I were on a cruise one time, and they were they had to play the wedding. Everybody been on a cruise here? They always play wedding game, uh, what do you call it, the newlywed game or something. Like that. And they have they have people that are usually there on their honeymoon. They'll have somebody that's been married two or three years, then the oldest couple. Well, this older couple was married 50 years. They were, they were actually celebrating their 50th anniversary. Well, one of the questions they asked the men when the women were off, when's the last time you told your spouse, I love you? And the newlywed said, just as he went off the stage. He leaned in, yeah, come on, they're newlyweds. And then they kissed us, I love you, baby. And he walked away. The other couple said, well, it's probably this morning when we woke up. The old man, man said, when I married her. All three of them got it right. And it broke my heart. Can you imagine that your spouse only tells you once in 50 years? That they love you? I can't imagine it. Can you imagine God only generating love one time in your whole life? See, that's not what agape love is about. 
It's renewed daily. You all with me? The darkest of the night, the last hours, just before dawn, God says in Romans 13, 12, is the time of darkness is almost over. Morning will soon be dawning in the eastern sky. He's coming back. He has prepared for us a special garment of protection for those dark days. When we will be under attack from every side, like we have never experienced in all of our lives. And that garment, the armor of light. And that is the garment, of the, the armor of light. That's this protection. He's given you this armor of light. And when the attack comes, we must be up and dressed and ready for the battle. If we are ready for the battle, we will be ready for the catching away, the, the, the rapture called away. The Holy Spirit has already laid out our garments for us. They have been washed in the blood of the Lamb, in Jesus Christ. They have been bathed by his word, nourished by his Holy Spirit. And in these last days, as we struggle in this last watch of the night, and every demon of hell will attack us in every way he can to destroy us, we must now be ready to meet them without fear, without flinching, by putting on the armor of light. You'd have think she wrote that now with what's going on in the world. She wrote this back in the 80s. This wasn't going on in the world today. Somewhat, but not like it is now. We're putting, don't flinch, you are protected. Peter warns us in 1 Peter 5, 8, be sober and vigilant because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walk around seeking whom he may devour. Again, see that, saints. This is one time I wish you had your Bible. You could highlight it. He walks around as as a roaring lion, walk around seeking whom he may devour. I told you, he can come at me in any way he wants. It's great. I don't care. He can be a lion. Isn't it funny? In the book of Genesis, he starts out as a little snake. In the book of Revelation, he ends up a great big serpent, a dragon. He eats a whole lot of flesh from there to the end, didn't he, to keep growing. So he only devours whom he may. He may come at me in every possible demonic look in the world, but I know what the Lord did for me. He kicked his teeth out. He not, all he, he can do is meow. He may have this big mane, this big lion come up roaring. He go, meow. Because I believe that's what the Lord, the confidence, the, do, I, do I battle? I battled this morning, saints, over Lou's Karen. Uh, Pastor Gwen, uh, yeah, Karen died a long while ago. That was his first wife. What's your name? Caleb was back in my office. He came in. He caught me crying and everything. I sure I battle with it. Come on, because I'm still human. But I know God's greater. I know if God takes her, where she's going to be. I know I'll see her one day again. I'm not saying I'd lack that faith. But the flesh, the human part of me, still cries out. And so does yours. But get a confidence in yourself. See, I know that I know, even though I still cry out in my spirit. That's called mourning, saints. The Bible tells us there's a time for that. Come on, you all with me? Am I speaking to anybody out here? When you see your armor of light, when, you, when he sees your armor of light wrapped around you, he won't be able to thrust. The, I'm talking about the enemy here. He's going to come after you like a roaring lion. But when he sees this armor of light around you, when you have your full armor of God on, that the Holy Spirit has prepared by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of his testimony, by all the things... He won't be able to fire a dart at you, a poisonous, fiery dart at you, because it's going to bounce off. You talk about Star Wars, the whole kingdom of God is Star Wars. <laughs> Have all the laser swords you want, it ain't getting through. And you will hear somebody go, I'm your father, it'll be God. Come on. <laughs> Whether your name's Luke, Sam, Paul, or George, come on. You Star Wars people. Hey, guys, that's straight from the kingdom. Come on. Brian, I'm your father. Thank you. 
Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Never be afraid to give too much agape love. The love, that love will protect you, even if you be mistaken by trusting people who would turn into your enemies. I just told you a minute ago, there's people who have come into my office that have blown my trumpet. You, I, I, I felt like a Snickers bar, better than almost the greatest thing ever made, amen? I don't know why I picked Snickers. I'm a Butterfinger person, but anyhow. <laughs> <laughs> whatever. I, there's times I, I feel I feel like, hey, I'm doing something. Two weeks later, they're leaving me. I've had people come in and go, Pastor, and this is the truth. I have never heard the word preach the way you preach. I don't know whether that's good or bad. <laughs> I'm starting to I'm trying to under, I'm starting to wonder about that. But I've never heard the way the word preach the way you preach it. And then three weeks or a month later going, I don't get fed here. I'm going. Am I schizophrenic or are they? Come on. <laughs> a minute ago, they're blowing my trumpet. The next word, I don't even know how to feed people. Well, obviously, I know how to feed people. <laughs> but the kingdom of God, saints, is what I'm talking about here. Love people. Know the three loves. Understand the three loves the Bible gives us. But Build your life around the agape love, the unconditional. Learn to love people when they're not lovable. Stop hating the enemy. Do you realize the ones that everybody's putting down and hating right now are made in the image of God? Tired of it. I'm tired of hearing the church slam the homosexuals and this one and that one. Don't like what they do, but love them. Amen. I don't like sin. I don't like the sin I get involved in from time to time. And don't say you don't, because then you just did. I don't do the big ones no more. Come on. But who am I to say what's big in God's eyes? I had somebody say to me once, I had a couple deacons that smoked. And they said, Pastor, Pastor, how can you let a demon, a, a demon? <laughs> Almost said Baptist then, didn't I? <laughs> how can you let a deacon, how can you let a deacon smoke? How can you let a deacon smoke? I said, Give me chapter and verse where it says they shouldn't. Well, what about the temple being the temple of the Holy Spirit? I went. <laughs> Bible mentions gluttony. Hello? Doesn't mention not smoking. Uh-oh. Now some of you are going to say, I'm, I'm, I'm preaching blasphemy up here, amen? It's the truth. When God touches a situation, then it's sin. What is sin to you, unless it's one of the ones God absolutely lays out, might not be sin to somebody else. I know, see, to me, a piece of apple pie or cherry pie with a dip of ice cream on it and chocolate syrup and caramel syrup dripping all over it is sin, is sin to me. I'm diabetic. That's sin to me. But how many of you can eat it? How many of you want one right now? They do now. Okay, come on. But see, it's not, but to me, I can't, I go to affairs and people say to me, would you like to have a piece of cake? I said, no, I, I, I really don't. I ate bread or I ate pasta and I can't have both. I've learned what my body will allow me to eat and how sick I'm going to get. Oh, I can eat it, then I pay the price for it. Come on. If I eat it, I know I'm going to be sick. I'm going to be feeling bad, and I got to pay the price all night for it. Half the night, half day the next day. I got to go home and drink 16 bottles of water and do 15 laps. Now that I got my, I got somebody bought me a block that says walk around, lay this block down on a piece of floor for Christmas, and walk around it twice, and then tell everybody you walked around the block twice today. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> That's under my Christmas tree. It will go right next to my chair. <laughs> Never be afraid to show it. 
God's protection with those hearts who are pure to him. And I'm going to close. It's time to go home. In these dark days, the only protection you have is the armor of light, of love. It will give off light so bright, listen to this, that it will blind the eyes of the one that's holding the arrows in their hands. That's what it did to Saul of Tarsus when he was persecuting me, the Lord says. It blinded him, and it changed his heart. And then Pastor Gwen wrote this, Trust me, keep on loving. It's the right thing to do. Say amen. I know you're finished with your Christmas vacationing and partying for Christmas, but New Year's coming up. I just challenge you, church, to stay in love. Get a if you get around your family and all this, and I know sometimes the holidays are not family, good family times. People bring up things and they try to, there's some people, and anybody in our family got the person you don't, you hope is never at a party. Am I the only one that has these kind of people in their families? All right. Y'all, y'all just don't want to raise your hand in case they're watching on television. I understand. But there's always somebody you really don't want to be there. And when they walk in, it kind of dampens the party. Love that person. Especially that person. Especially that person. They need it. The only reason they come in with that kind of a mentality is because they don't feel lovable. They don't feel they're wanted. And they're hurting and they're broken. And if you'll turn it around, you'll blind all that darkness. You'll blind it, you'll bind it, and then you get the opportunity to tell them about the agape love of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. All right, now I have something to do that I, this is part of my job that I hate. We have someone that's leaving us, that's heading north. North, right? Northeast. Catherine is going to be moving to Orlando. And we're going to pray for her, and we're going to just ask for God's blessings. This is one of the things I have issues with, because I'm not sure personally if she's supposed to go or not. So uh, talk, we've, Her and I have already talked. She, under, she knows how I feel about this. And it's not something I'm not saying or not. I don't have, I don't, if I had a thus saith the Lord, I'd have no problem saying it. And she knows I don't. So she's got to go with what's in her heart. That's what I told her. I'm going to anoint her with oil, and we're going to pray for her. We're just going to ask God's blessings upon her and where she's going and what she's going to do. Can I have the leadership come stand with me, please? Let me have a seat, Kathy. Thank you, Father. Bible says when you move or God moves you around, or even if you're going to leave a church, leave it properly. Come to the pastor and get prayed for that they may release you and send you. Well, I'm going to release her. Because i got a feeling, I don't know why. I hope I'm wrong, make me wrong. But i got a feeling she's coming home. I don't know when, how long. I know she'll come home from time to time. Anyhow, she's still got family down here. But we're just going to pray, and we're going to let God's anointing be upon her life. Catherine's anointed. She's got a call on her life. And I want to see it go forth. Amen. Stretch your hands forward, saints, as we pray over it. Father, we thank you right now for the blessings of God. Father, I just pray, God, as she moves forward, God, that everything she puts her hand to and everything, God, she, she advances for the kingdom purpose, God, that you bless and you touch. Now, God, we, we just release her, God, from her accountability here but not from her pastor, Lord. God, I just ask that you touch her. God, let the move be one of these. God, let her, which she's with her grandsons and these things, Father, I pray, God, that she becomes a light captain for them, God. God, that they may see Christ. They may start seeing Christ greater and greater. God, that you may use her in that instrument, God, to help bring these boys back into the kingdom of God. 
God, now we thank you, Father. As she goes, God, let her go with the grace and the peace and our prayers, our blessings, Lord God. And we thank you right now. And it's in the precious name of Jesus that she goes forth, Lord. And let all God's people say, Amen, 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 Amen. amen, amen. Come on, give the Lord a great big God bless you. When, it, does anyone here not understand the Jesus Christ I'm talking about? Do you everyone here born again? Everyone born again? Well, good. Go out. If you're born again, go out and invite somebody into the kingdom. You know, that's what that's what God saved you. He didn't save you to have a trophy. God's not in, God's not into trophies. He told, let everything reproduce. After its own kind. Now, don't go out and have a bunch of babies. <laughs> go out and bring some people into the kingdom. Don't have no more babies, Mom. All right, that's the, go, out, go out and bring them into the kingdom. Amen. Go out and to introduce them to Jesus Christ. The rest of this season, use it. Uh, Brother Bill said it so preciously up here. Christmas to a Christian should be every day. Easter should be an everyday a current in our heart, not just, I love this time of the year. I, I just, my mama being Italian, I was brought up that love of Christmas. Yeah. But love it with, love it with all, every day of your heart. Father, I release your people now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we send them. Let everybody say, Amen. hug a neck before you leave. Don't you leave here without hugging somebody's neck. Amen. God bless you all. Go out and celebrate.